Amen. You can celebrate the Lord Jesus. I mean, that's a good attempt for yourselves. You can do it better for Jesus. celebration unto him in the name of Jesus. Uh, glory be to Jesus. Uh, amen. 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 You may take your seats in the presence of the Lord and get ready to appreciate the praise and worship as they take their seats. Uh, celebrate them in Jesus' mighty name. Later on in Matthew chapter number 28, 
telling them to go. So that invitation later translated the prematurity to their departure, going to all the world, preaching the gospel to all the unreached. Therefore, I appreciate all of you and all those that were organizing that. Um, I remember um, I told you that I'm going to maybe talk, to, talk about these things uh, that we've been talking about. Uh, you remember the book of Nehemiah, we've uh, tried, we've attempted to cover different aspects. And uh, my interest particularly is not on the things that we know, because there are so many things that we know about the book of Nehemiah, particularly about the wall and how he constructed it in a record of two days in there about, and uh, how he mobilized, how he went there and, and restored all these people. I'm not focusing mostly on that. I'm focusing on the areas that are not mostly focused in by many, and I believe uh, they are going to be a blessing unto us. And I had titled the message, Move to Move, but today I am talking about the return of joy in joy land. The return of joy in joy land. Now, I'm going to pose a question to us and uh, give you something that uh, I experienced uh, last week. Uh, and then uh, we are going to proceed so that we are on the same page. Now, um, as you know, this, this by the way, I, I must uh, caution you that sometimes and at some point it's going to sound political, but I have no interest whatsoever with the politics of the day. I'm just interested with what is happening, vis-a-vis -vis what is written, vis-a-vis -vis what we can do as uh, the people of God, because we have a duty. And um, I know many times when we talk about things that are closely related to politics, uh, as the church, we are told to keep off. We are told to concentrate with the scriptures. And uh, anybody that is challenging us or myself to do so today, I am reading the scriptures, because uh, that's where I read. Um, and uh, many times they forget that uh, we, we, we may be the church, we are called the church, some of us that are in the clutch. Uh, we preach the gospel but still live under the same political environment and social environment as everyone else. And therefore, I don't preach and then later on depart to heaven and come back on Sunday to preach again. And I uh, leave you here on earth to live here on earth, but I live on this earth and uh, you live on this earth, you experience what is experienced, and therefore you have every right to participate in the happenings of our nation and uh, most, uh, and even the society that we live in. And I want you to look at your neighbor and tell them, you have a right. Now tell them as though you believe it, tell them you have a right to participate in whatever is happening in our nation. Come on, I can't hear you tell them in whatever is happening in our nation and in our surrounding. Yeah. So that it's, it's not a privilege that you are given. No, it's not a privilege or, or that is given to a few that should participate and the rest of us should keep up. And um, let me ask you a question, for example, just a week ago or thereabout, uh, um, you remember that we were experiencing uh, struggle here and there, I don't want to go into it, but um, um, conveniently that morning uh, the government issued a statement about the repercussions and uh, the consequences of those that have uh, occasioned that shortage and all that, and said many things, eh? and later on the ERK came and uh, announced the new pump prices, and uh, of interest, or my interest is not even the pump prices, it's the subsidy. Let me ask you a question, a general question, and be very honest. You are told, for example, that you are supposed to pay 170 something, I believe 74 there, but you are paying 144. Are you happy? Are you happy? No, I'm asking, are you happy? You know, the question, because we were told what you are supposed to pay. The subsidy that you are being uh, given or the cushioning that the government has done to ensure that uh, the money doesn't suffer, the impact of the global prices and all that. 
and uh, you, but you are still paying more so that you can't see what is being subsidized because to an ordinary layman like myself, let me consider myself a layman today, any subsidy, I would consider something that is expensive. If you lowered the price, then tell me it was as a result of a subsidy, I would be happy. But if you increase the price and tell me it was meant to increase more, but I have already cushioned you or already given you a subsidy, then I can't be happy as an ordinary person because I will suffer anyway. I will suffer anyway. Now, uh, last week, um, uh, as I told you, I preached at a place called uh, Komodai, and uh, there is um, where the churches, some of you may have visited them. It's called Marige. And uh, on Monday, they told me a story and gave me a bulletin. On Monday now, this week, they were doing a dedication for that area. And I wanted to follow why dedication and uh, what is the thinking behind that dedication of the area. And I was told stories. By the way, I didn't know that part of history. Though I live around and I've been around for quite a while, I didn't understand that history. And they were telling me that uh, the market there was biggest around. So that people from even, I was told, Moranga, Machakos, and wherever used to go there for market. I was also told something. These are things that I was told, so they are not proven. You may dispute them. I was told that, uh, in fact, our church, Yogu may know where our church is. Previously, they had rented a hall which used to host the cooperative bank. So when I went to that church the first time, I saw some inscriptions of the cooperative bank and all that, and I asked them. And now, uh, on Sunday, I was being told that uh, that cooperative bank was the first cooperative bank in Kenya. That one, there. Now, again, they told me the number of things, big things that were hosted around there. And the number of big people that were living around there. But some of you that have gone to that place, it's a shell of itself for myself. In fact, the buildings are abandoned. And in fact, I was told the few people that live in those other buildings there, they live for free because the owners abandoned them and completely forgot them and they went elsewhere and moved on. Because something happened and the market could no longer continue and a business hub that was attracting so many people is no longer, you know, there. There is no market there. In fact, the biggest shop there is a, an equivalent of a kiosk today. But the buildings still are there and I was told so many other things that were there and I believe uh, those, those things are, I can uh, uh, avail that brochure that they were, they had printed uh, uh, as they were dedicating that place. They were saying, we are reclaiming the glory of this place. And what happened? What happened? A place that had passion and joy no longer has anything. It's very dull and nobody is interested. In fact, if you are taken there and told that this one used to be a business hub, of the region, you cannot believe it. Today, I was there on Sunday. If you are taken there and told that this used to, you know, this market used to sell millions and millions. Sir. There are so big people that used to come and invest here. There are so many corporates that used to come there. Banks were there. When there were no banks around here, there were banks there. The first ones are of that nature. But today, they are a shell of the former self. And that can happen when there are things that are done or things that are not done, there can be a place which was meant for joy and yet there is no joy. We've just read a portion of the scriptures of Nehemiah chapter number 5 and from verse 1. And maybe of interest you may at your own time read the whole chapter because it is talking about the same thing. But one of the things that I want to say as I begin is that God intended to give Israel joy in their own land. He intended to give them joy in their own land. And that is, uh, if you read the book of Exodus chapter number 3, verse 7 through to 8, uh, that's what the Bible is saying, how he intended uh, to give them joy in their own land. And um, if you give it to me, all right. This, this, the Bible says, uh, and the Lord says, 
after the conversation they were having with Moses, eh? I have surely seen the affliction of my people which are in Egypt and have heard their cry by reason of their taskmasters. For, um, for I know they are sorrows. And then verse 8, and I am come down to deliver them out of the land of the Egyptians and uh, to bring them up out of the land unto or that land unto a good land and a large unto a land flowing with milk and honey unto the place of the Canaanites, Hivites uh, and the Amorites and uh, the Perizzites, the Hivites and the Jebusites. Now, um, this is the conversation that God was having with Moses and a number of things here he mentioned after he had seen the oppression. He saw a situation whereby they were being oppressed by a foreign government, a foreign nation. And uh, while they were there, he saw because they were in the foreign land, that the foreigners were pushing them toward the wall and making them to suffer and they were having no joy whatsoever. Then he heard their cry. They cried unto the Lord and he heard their cry. And after he heard their cry, he understood their sorrow because it is one thing to hear, it is another to uh, um, not just sympathize but empathize, feel the pain of the one crying. He understood, that's why he was saying, and I know their sorrow. After understanding their sorrow, he did a number of things. I've mentioned this before and I'm just mentioning them again because it was uh, of interest to demonstrate how God intended the Israelites to have joy in the joy land. And he said, I am calm down so that he took the initiative, he took a bold step of coming down himself uh, with all the heavenly forces uh, to ensure that he has done something. And one of the interesting things uh, that when God hears and understands what we are going through, he does not just empathize with us, uh, he comes uh, down. And how I pray, may God come down in every of your situations in the mighty name of Jesus. Because he comes. Now, when he came, uh, he said that, uh, to deliver them out of the hands of the Egyptians. Now, mission number one, when he has come, he wants to deliver them because they are, have been under the oppression of the Egyptians. He wants to ensure that they are no longer under the uh, uh, Egyptian oppressors. And he wants also to bring them out of their land so that that will not continue. They will be out of their land. Now, to be taken to their own land. And he demonstrates uh, or he expresses how this land is. He is saying it is a good land, number one. It is a spacious land, number two. And uh, it is a place endowed uh, with easily accessible resources. Because uh, they were told it is a good land, a large one, and it's a land flowing with milk and honey so that it's endowed with resources that are not only there, but they are easily accessible. Now, all of us agree and believe that our nation, Kenya, and our country is endowed with resources, but how easily are those resources accessible to everyone? That is a question altogether that many of us may not be able to answer. Because there are so many things uh, in this country, we talk about them, uh, we talk about uh, the, 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 the gold, we talk about uh, the, 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 the precious stones uh, like uh, the diamonds, I don't know, the mining uh, industry is big in this nation, though maybe not well exploited, it's big, uh, we have uh, a lot of potential, our ground is fertile, uh, we have... Um, even discovered recently oil and all that. We have so many things uh, in this nation. We are endowed. Tell your neighbor you are blessed to be to belong to this nation. Now tell them with some oomph you are blessed to belong to this nation. However, not so many of us are proud to belong to this nation. Why? Because what is meant to satisfy us what is meant to bring us joy. Every day it's bringing us sorrow. And the Israelites, what was meant to bring them joy?
joy. And you remember the celebration that they had when they were going. And the first place of occupation is Jericho. And why Jericho? Because Jericho was surrounded by a perimeter wall that was so, you know, massive and big and all that. And they had surrounded themselves. And the Israelites came and they did nothing, by the way. That's why I'm telling you, easily accessible resources. They did nothing. What they did is that they went round, uh, as per the instructions of God through Joshua, they went round uh, for seven days. And the seventh day, they went round seven times. Uh, and lastly, they shouted. And that shout uh, collapsed the wall. The walls of Jericho, they collapsed and they started occupying. And there was joy, there was satisfaction. In fact, now, when, as soon as they start subdividing the land, uh, some of the benefits were, um, you know, dependent on the ability of the ability and the input of everyone because uh, they were taught to, you know, clear the land and as much as you clear, you shall occupy. And um, you remember that at some point Abraham had been told, uh, as far as your eyes can see, that I will give you. So that that was dependent on vision. That is so easy. It was dependent on vision. If you can see as far as you can, where your eyes die and dim and they can no longer see anything, that's the extent of your boundaries. So it was dependent on the vision of Abraham. And for these people, it was dependent on the participation for them to enjoy the land. Whereas now, this is the second return because uh, that was the first return from Egypt. Now, when they are returning uh, the second time from the Babylonian captivity, this is the second time. And while they are there, they are suffering. While they are there, they are not having joy. While they are in a place that is endowed uh, with the... Uh, because Israel did not stop becoming a place flowing with milk and honey simply because they were deported or simply because they had been captive by the Babylonians. It did not stop. There is nowhere we read, there is no evidence in the Bible whatsoever that we read at, at some point the milk ceased and the honey ceased and the fertile ground was no longer fertile. We do not read anything of that nature. We read that everything was good in this land. However, they are in a very good land a very good environment, there, yet they were, they were suffering. Because if you go back now to Nehemiah, where we have read, I'm going to point out uh, a number of things uh, that these people were going through. A number of things uh, that these people were going through. Number one, there was inequality in their midst. Because the Bible says, and there was a great cry of the people and uh, their wives against their brethren, the Jews, not the foreigners this time. You remember, while they were in the Babylonian captivity, they changed hands of the oppressors. Because uh, at some point, the Babylonians were subdued by the Persians. Uh, and later on, during the days of Jesus, uh, 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 um, even before, by the way, the days of Jesus, the Grecians uh, had come and subdued uh, the uh, Persians and they had taken over. And now the Romans were the ones that uh, were reigning over them during the days of Jesus. Uh, no wonder they were, they were under a lot of law of the Roman and all that. And, and, and therefore, they had changed hands in oppressors, but their land had remained intact. Now, one of the things that I want you to note is that uh, the Israelites had changed hands in oppressors uh, so that you may go from one challenge to another from one demon to another, but your destiny remains intact. And God ensures that what he has pre uh, prepared for you is intact, no matter the challenges that you go through. Now, they are returning to their own land, yet they are complaining not about the Egyptians, not about the Babylonians, not about the Persians, but about they are Jew brethren. They are the ones who are oppressing them. Now, in this country, we complained, uh, and we, I believe uh, we all talk about independence uh, from the West and all that. And I ask myself, because we are fully, I believe, uh, liberated, I believe, I stand corrected, I believe we are fully liberated uh, from our colonial masters uh, 
But uh, who is oppressing who today? Because whenever there is complaint and there is a cry of oppression, there must be an oppressor. Tell your neighbor, there must be an oppressor. You can't be crying about an oppression where there is no oppressor. Don't be deceived. Even in a home, even in a home, if you find one of the parties complaining, whether it's the wife, the husband, or the children, they are complaining of oppression, then there must be an oppressor. They may not even mention, they may not direct blame, they may not say it is this or that, but there is an oppressor. And who is this oppressor? Because what I believe is that uh, we came from the colonial oppressors to our own local oppressors. People of the same race, people of the same culture, people who worship the same God, people who are equal citizens who are oppressing each other. Now ask your neighbor, who is oppressing you? In fact, uh, every day I've gone to places and I've visited many places, uh, you know, here and there uh, as a stranger, by the way, as a stranger, many times I arrive and uh, I know just a few people and I sit among strangers, people that I don't know, and I in barrios, in these other occasions, and in these other, and people are heavily talking about politics, heavily talking about politics. We are all interested in the politics of the nation, but you'll hear that most of it is complaint. Most of it is complaint. We are experiencing this. We are experiencing this. This is not going to, going right. This is not working. This is not good. The other one is not good. Uh, and therefore, if we are complaining about issues that are not working, issues that are not good, are we complaining about the West or our colonial masters? Or are we complaining amongst ourselves? Ask your neighbor, who are you complaining to? Or again, now ask them, because you know some of us are just now reluctant. Ask them, who are you complaining against? Because now, these people are complaining against them, themselves. They are saying, it is our brethren, the Jews, and they are crying to Nehemiah. Now, you know, Many times we ascribe many troubles to uh, many quarters, but uh, rarely do we do nothing about it. And uh, these people, they cried, and when they cried, they are saying, these are our people. We come from the same place. We do the same things. Our children are, are like their children. Our families like their families. But they are oppressing us. So that we have turned one against another. Now, the ones that are stopping the enjoyment of the flowing of the milk and honey are no longer foreigners, but they are locals, people of the same color and language. And uh, another thing that is happening here, that there was... Uh, there was starvation. They were hungry. Because if you read now, continuing further, uh, these people, they are hungry. And they are using everything that they have for food. George, are we still together? Or you are with Paul? Now, because they are saying here at the last okay. part is that therefore that we may eat and live. They are many, they have increased in number. That's what they were saying. And for the sakes of their sons and daughters, they take corn that they may eat and live. There was starvation. I know many of us are not happy because of the food prices, because of the things that are very costly. Yesterday I bought soap, two bath soap, eh? two. Yeah. And uh, out of 500, there was a change of 40 something shillings. Eh? Two bath soaps, two. Two bath soaps. Eh? So, so, at some point, say, we shall not be washing our clothes with soap. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> uh, at the very least, you know, you know, those of us that were in the places where they are rivers. Remember, we are going to wash clothes in the river. And there are people who used to come without 
so. So what they used to do is that uh, because the clothing are indeed very dirty, those are the days that people used to wear clothing and eat their dirty. They were not wearing them to change them in the evening or tomorrow or something. No, 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 no. They were wearing until they are very dirty so that they would come and pick a rock somewhere, uh, you know, uh, soak them in water and hit them against that rock, <laughs> trying to get rid of that dirt. And I see us going to those days uh, and trying to use whatever methods to survive. These people were hungry. What, but was everybody hungry? That's a question. Was everybody hungry? The answer is no. Everybody was not hungry. It was these people. And there were those that had mortgaged everything because of their food. They had mortgaged everything. This is what we are told. We have mortgaged our land, our vineyards, and our houses that we might buy corn because of the dove. That dove is famine. This is the It is famine. They have mortgaged. Just imagine the level of this hunger that if you reach a place whereby you have exchanged your house for food, then the famine must be severe. You have exchanged your land for food. Then you must be suffering. You have exchanged. They had ex and this, by the way, were things of value, of the highest value that they had. Actually, there was nothing that was of a higher value than these lands, vineyards, and houses. What else? What else could you say it was of value to them more than this? So they were mortgaging it for food. They were really suffering. They had reached that point whereby they have no houses just to feed themselves. They have no lands just to feed themselves. They have no vineyards just to feed themselves. These people must be suffering while others were enjoying. And in fact, this was as a, as a result of this extortionist. Because when there is uh, exploitation, then you realize that uh, that can very well happen. If you, if you hear, I, I, I was talking to, there is a friend of mine who works for these, um, they are called watch. These people that give you money for some corruption or some, um, for a car or something, they are called the watch. There is another name, they are called Shylocks, yeah, exactly, that's what I was looking for. Shylocks. I was, there is a friend of mine that works for Shylocks and uh, he was telling me how people go and uh, you go and sign everything. You go, you take your vehicle plus the logbook and you sign. Those days were well, though not this digital. Eh? You sign literally the transfer. You would know what those are. You sign the transfer of your motor vehicle. So that that is to say that in the event that you fail to pay that money, your car will be sold or auctioned immediately. And he was telling me that they are very happy they are doing well, those times. Because there are so many people, and I know you have met them, people that are crying to you because they, they are vehicles or their lands are about to be auctioned because of a debt. Sometimes uh, you see someone having placed a car maybe worth a million plus just to get a hundred thousand and yet that car is about to be auctioned just because of a hundred thousand. And uh, the, 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 the interest uh, is exorbitant. They are way too high. And this is what was happening. from hand to mouth. And uh, there was also, there were those that were in heavy debts. They were in heavy debts. Because of what? The taxes. We are told here, there. To pay tributes. These were like the equivalent of what we call the land rates. 
now they were supposed to pay to the Persian government but now they are not able to so they borrow money with that land being the collateral to go and pay for the land rates and uh, since uh, the interests are so high they are able to pay debt they were heavily in debt and as a result of that debt because what happens when you are heavily indebted or you are you have borrowed or over borrowed it, it means that you can become a slave of the creditor very easily become a slave of the creditor and that's what they were saying that it has come to a time now that some of our daughters have already been taken as slaves and in fact uh, uh, this one the, the, the king james uses two words the servant and the slave now meaning that uh, some of them are at the level of service serving to re, uh, 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 is it called, is it called uh, service to, to service the debt uh, serving the creditors to service the debt but now since the uh, service is not enough some of them now are sold by those creditors to now other people, not the, uh, the, the Jews, to other people. And this is what they were saying, that our flesh is uh, like their flesh and our brother, or all that, and our children as their children. And our law, we bring into bondage our sons and daughters to be servants. That is number one. And some of our daughters are brought unto bondage already. They have been sold by the creditors. And you remember, we, we, we experienced this uh, in the book of, I believe, uh, Second Kings. If you read uh, the book of Second Kings, they are, uh, is it chapter 3 or thereabout? Or chapter 4? Uh, chapter 3, chapter 4, there you can check it out. Uh, where there is a woman who came and cried unto Elisha because her husband died who was a prophet and uh, he was heavily in debt. Or he was heavily in debt. So this is a desperate situation indeed. And many of us are going to this level. Many of us are going to this level. I remember someone telling me that uh, uh, one of their creditors came to them and they told them, Now I don't have your money and I don't intend having it in the near future. I don't even foresee <laughs> having it in the near future. So, do your worst. <laughs> so, in other words, this person is saying, if you want to take me as your slave, so be it. I'm ready. Whatever it is that you want to do, do it because I don't have money to pay you. These people have gone to this level that they are almost... Now, I, I was looking at uh, the causes of this, the causes of this, and I came across a number of things which I'm not an expert on in uh, economy and all that. But I came across all this, and there have been uh, large conversions in our political circles about uh, the different forms and, uh, uh, of uh, modern economic and political. They have been mentioned here and there. And uh, uh, I, I want us to look at maybe a few of them, as I told you, or, 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 or as I tell you what Nehemiah did to remedy this crisis. Because these people, they may be have affected by a number of things, a number of things, and uh, you will choose what it is. There are people that uh, operate under the socialism, eh? um, and you know, I, I told you I'm not an expert in this, and therefore I stand corrected. But um, socialism is an economical and uh, or, or an economic and political system under which the means of production 
and consumer prices are controlled by the government to best uh, meet the needs of the people. Now, in this system, the socialism, and you know our neighbors here tried it, the, the Tanzanians, you remember, whereby people are not allowed to determine the, the, the prices of things and, uh, you know, uh, the productivity is in the hands of the government and all that, and therefore they are able to control the prices and all that. And in this socialism, they control the taxes or, or, or even, sorry, the prices to best suit the people. And uh, th this system has been adapted by many and uh, some have failed and some have succeeded. And I don't know where we are as a country. There is another one uh, called capitalism and this was also, may have also been present in the days of these Jews. Capitalism is an economic system under which the means of production are privately owned. So that production and consumer prices are based on a free market um, system of, you know, supply and demand. This one we did in business, eh? those who did in business education, whereby that are the means of production are privately owned so that it is people individually that are controlling they own the means of production they even uh, determine how people are going to be rewarded if they labor in that production they determine the prices but these prices are allowed as they say to be determined by the forces of market free market the way we say demand and supply when the supply is high and the demand is low the prices go low eh? and when the supply is low and uh, the demand is high the, the prices go high but also in effect by the way some of uh, many nations embraced this because it uh, sort of promoted efficiency innovation and competition somehow because where you find like a socialism in play you realize that uh, there was a lot of reluctance there was no passion because it is every job. It is everybody's production. It is everybody's uh, good. It is everybody that is going to enjoy. And therefore, no one is, uh, you know, so much passionate about anything. All of them are demotivated. However, however, this capitalism, if unchecked, can be exploited. And many times they say in nations whereby it has not been checked, has been exploited, whereby it's just a few people that control that market. In fact, sometimes they would even discuss among themselves. And one such a case is like our fuel. Eh? Or my, I don't know how many friends you have that are fuel marketers and all that. Just the other day, we were told that what is happening is that there was no shortage. And I thought maybe we had the same thing. There was no shortage. It's only the marketers who are withholding some funds are yet to be released to them as subsidies, the one we were talking about earlier. And they are saying they are withholding it. They are saying since we have not been paid, we are going to withhold it. So, they are just a few people who are withholding but who is suffering? The whole nation. The whole nation is suffering. And, and sometimes they, they would determine what to charge, for example, in interest those that are in the banking sector, they would determine what the prices would be for certain commodities. They would even withhold them strategically to increase the prices so that later on they will sell at those prices even when the supply is um, in good flow. So that, I don't know where we are as a country, but many of us say that we have mixed both capitalism and socialism. But I see uh, uh, some very low elements of uh, uh, socialism. Of course, there is the other one, which is the extreme of socialism, which is uh, a communism, which has worked so well in China, they say. 
it has worked so well because one of the things about uh, communism, uh, because all means of production, the buildings, the machinery, the tools, the labor, are owned by the government. And people, individuals, are not allowed to privately own the means of production, the tools, the machineries, the whatever. They are owned by the government so that the government controls everything. But it is called a dictatorship in some ways because in socialism, it is people that determine who are those people that are going to rule them and to determine all those other things. But in the communism, the, the people don't decide. It's a dictatorship. And I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what. This system was found, in fact, in the book of Acts, if you read the book of Acts chapter number two, um, you realize that this is what the apostles were applying. A place whereby they would say that they are selling whatever they have to bring it at the feet of the apostles and everyone is given according to need, not according to contribution. Get this right. Not according to contribution. It is according to need. So that those that are selling, like Ananias at some point felt like they are being cheated because he felt like, uh, I am selling it for so much, yet I'm going to receive so little, so let me put my share aside first before I take it before the feet of the apostle so that I will benefit in the long run. And uh, the apostles tried it and it didn't work, by the way. It didn't work for long. It was not sustainable. But they say, if you have heard this being said, that in China it has worked so well. In fact, when it started, they would tell you, I don't know, I say it, in these things I'm not an authority yet. So I stand corrected. That before they started this, they were poor. Their population was increasing because I think they are the largest eh, in terms of population. Eh? Their population was increasing and they were not doing well because of the capitalism. And the capitalism, in fact, there is another one I came across and I had my friend mentioning it about it. The, uh, uh, I don't know, my tongue, I'm not able to fully pronounce it. He was calling it uh, uh, only the oligarchic kind of a system controlled by the oligarchs, controlled by the oligarchs. And this one, I'm very careful on trending on this ground because here they have been called other names. It's a, 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 a group, a cocoon of few people, you know, who, which have a similar characteristics like they have wealth together, they have interests that are, you know, similar, they have family ties or religious ties or other ties and they come together, they are like the dark forces. Because sometimes they may not rule in the government, but they are behind the scenes. But you will feel their hands. And I don't know what you think about uh, the other day I saw, and I asked myself, because I told you that it may seem political in nature in this one. Um, I saw the other day, uh, the deadline of nomination was Friday. Friday. What, what date was it? When was Friday? Twenty? Second. A guy appears two days before the nomination. His name is just flashed somewhere. <laughs> two days before the nomination. No. I, 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 I applied my mind to every possible scenario to see the merit of it and I couldn't see it. I couldn't see it. I could only see another hand behind it. And someone was saying that it is those oligarchs that determine who. It is not because you, you all tell me that 
you're saying. In around uh, four years, is it around four years or thereabout, he has landed four or so jobs eh, that are very lucrative. Because sometimes with the oligarchs, there is those that find favor with them that uh, you know benefit. They somehow benefit out of that system. But those who do not find favor with them, no matter what you do, you will suffer. Because I felt, I felt, and I felt myself, this is my feeling, that in all, you know, standards of fairness, was it fair to the rest? Was it fair to the rest? Now, put yourself in the shoes of that, those fellas, those other fellas. Don't just look at those, that. Was it fair to the rest? Do you think they were fully in agreement? The, the other fellas? They were not. But the oligarchs decided, they say, in, in, you know, in view of our interest in this city, this guy is better suited to take care of our interests. Interest. I, I saw him just one day going around my office saying, the Then the following day, he is pronounced. One he cry that. are the same people, by the way, that were operating these dark forces, that were operating in the days of the Jews. They are there, then they are making it big, then they are having their way, then they are making a kill out of everything, then they are having life so good when everyone is complaining, when everyone is complaining. Of course, we have a mixture of all these kind of systems in our government, and uh, even in the Israelites are uh, this was the case, that there were people that were determining, they were capitalists, and uh, there were those that were now advocating, because the rest are advocating for socialism, it's a, a system that is fairly you know, good for all, eh? uh, as opposed to all these others. Now, this, what did he do? You can write this. Uh, what did he do to, or uh, what was his approach, Nehemiah, approach to settle this problem? He was provoked, number one. He was provoked. He was provoked. And I ask myself today, when we hear the cry of the people, are we provoked? Because Nehemiah was provoked. It is about being provoked. In fact, many of the leaders today and many of the aspiring leaders today are not provoked by anything. They are not provoked by your troubles. They are not provoked by your needs. They are not provoked by your cries. They are only compelled by their own personal ambitions and all that. But he was provoked. In fact, even God had been provoked. Earlier we read with you that he said, I have heard the cry of my people. God was provoked and he came. And when he came, he sent Moses. Because uh, when now God is provoked, he also provokes people that are right to settle the problem. We must always provoke God and people your neighbor, we must provoke God and people. Unless we provoke God and people, then our cry is going to remain constant. That way, we are going to August, uh, after the elections, we are going to cry just the same way we have cried, and we are going to continue complaining because we have not fully provoked God and the right people to settle the problems. Number two, he strategized before acting. He strategized before acting. If you read uh, uh, verse number six, you see he was uh, 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 angry. That's what the Bible uses, the word angry, when he heard the cry of uh, these people. And then he strategized, he strategized. He, the, the Bible, then I consulted with myself. That is asking within himself. It is coming up with a plan of how to resolve this problem. And I am asking a question because we are headed to elections. Some of the leaders that are, you know, uh, 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 you know, running for office today, are they well uh, strategic people, as Wamai would call it? Have they strategized on reducing or dealing with our problems? Or are they going to strategize after they get to office? Because 
some of us we say maybe they don't, maybe they do. Some of them have manifestos, some of them have these good looking ideas and all that. But uh, he strategized. Um, because great ideas are born before, before, not after. Now, number three, he rebuked the leaders. He rebuked the leaders. He was a straight shooter. He, he, he did not just like a consult and uh, start going and beating about the bush. He rebuked them. These the nobles and the rulers. And, and sometimes, as the church, we have attempted, but we have told, keep it to the bush. telling us who occasioned the troubles that we are going through. And uh, some of them, they need a review. Tell your neighbor, there must be someone to review them. And to call them out and to tell them, this is not right. A right is a right, no matter who is doing it. A wrong is a wrong, no matter who is doing it. And sometimes because of our political inclination and because of our ethnic, uh, you know, background, and not looking bad in front of this and the other. We have no people that are ready to rebuke the leadership of the country to be able to change. Because uh, um, we are looking out for our interest. Then, number four, he called for a protest. This is dangerous and I will not expound on it. He, he, and, and I said, a great assembly against against them. He called for a protest. Protest did not start for my yesterday. No. And individual citizens sometimes do not understand their ways and means of doing a protest because some of us believe we just we must take those bushes and whatever, or we must run around and uh, you know shout. And all, all those manner of things. And by the way, myself, I've uh, never been very good. I've never been very good at it. I've uh, never been very good at it. At whatever level, even when I was out there, even when I was a young boy, boy, boy came up and I, I was never very good at it. The demonstrations and those manner of things, I've never been good at them. But can people of who we are as they say we never protest uh, what else did he do
some of us can be able to do something. But even more so, those that are in leadership positions and aspire for more, before they aspire for that more, then in the meantime they should be doing something. They should have the ability to do something within their, 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 their means. Because uh, 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 this uh, Nehemiah is saying that I have done something. I have done something. And I said unto them, we after our ability have redeemed our brethren, the Jews, which were sold unto uh, the brethren. We have done whatever we could. And here he's talking about his leadership, him and uh, his uh, leadership. He did something within his ability. And today, my, my, myself, uh, if the Bible says uh, about in Matthew chapter number 25, um, like uh, if you are faithful with retro, more will be entrusted into you or unto you. But if you are not entrusted with retro, even the ritual that you have, like the one that had one talent, will be taken away from you, or should be taken away from you. Now, and, and, and sometimes it is good for us to ask ourselves, for, those, for all those that are fronting themselves for political leadership, what have they done with the small positions that they have had? What have they done so far? What have they contributed? And so on and so forth. Because Nehemiah did what he could. He did not just complain. He did what he could. Then he invoked the fear of God. He invoked the fear of God. When he is rebuking them, he is telling them, these people, that you should be people uh, that uh, have the fear of God. He's saying, and I also say, it is not good that which you are doing. Now he's rebuking the oppressors. Remember, these are the oppressors he's addressing to address the issues of the complainant. He said, that uh, ought he not to walk in the fear of our God because of the reproach of the heathen and uh, um, our enemies? Are you not supposed to walk in the fear of God? Are we not supposed to walk in the fear of God? And I am asking a question, even today, where is that element in all our leadership? In the fear of God, where is that element? Because maybe things would have been different and they could get better if people are walking in the fear of God. Then lastly, lastly, he demonstrated sacrifice and selflessness. Sacrifice and selflessness. Listen to what he is saying in verse 14. He is saying, saying something. Um, Moreover, from the time that I was appointed to be their governor, he was already in administration. In the, Jude, uh, in the land of Judah, um, from the 20th year, even unto the 2 and the 30th year of uh, that king, eh, that is 12 years, I and my brethren have not eaten the bread of the governor. In fact, he was saying, I and my colleagues, my servants, have not taken our portion, our rightful portion. He forfeited his rights and privileges. He was not taking a salary. He was, you know, sacrificing. He was saying, for 12 years, having what? And even, by the way, he was participating in the work because he was saying, even in terms of the construction of the wall, I have been there. And my servants have been there. Because how did he mobilize for them to construct the wall? He realized that these people, some of them could be lazy, some of them could be afraid, some of them could... So they were assigned their own portions according to their houses and particularly strategically where their houses were. And if you read uh, uh, where the wall was being constructed, you realize that uh, there are families that constructed just the portion that was in front of their houses. But Nehemiah is saying that even in that I participated, I came and what? I never required any pay. I never took my privileges. I never took my salary for 12 years. And he's reminding them that the other two, if you go further, that the other two have been collecting. The other two, his predecessors, the, the other two were collecting. 
the, but the former governors that had been before me were chargeable unto the people and taken them uh, bread and wine besides 40 shekels of silver. Yeah, even their servants bear rule over the people. But so did I or did not I because of the fear of God. So sacrifice and selflessness is something that we should look out for. But is it uh, possible in our country to find people of sacrifice and selflessness? Because what I hear and what I know is that uh, for the common person, you are promised about how your tomorrow will be better. How your tomorrow will be better. How your tomorrow will be better. But for them and their privileges and their allowances, how they are today will be better. Have they ever postponed, by the way? In fact, just some other times, and you realize that there is this mama that was there. I sympathized with her. Uh, she was called Sarah Serem eh? in the salaries and whatever commission. Remember them, say, that ma madam. I, I really sympathize with that madam. She was in charge of a commission, but she was toothless. <laughs> she was trying to down scale the salaries of the MPs, but they, <laughs> they raised and they, they made sure that she was toothless. In fact, they made sure she was so powerless and so helpless. Did she set any salary, by the way? I don't know. I don't know which salary that she said. <laughs> and yet it's a constitutional co commission. It's a con constitutional commission. An office that is mandated by the constitution to take care of the salaries. And yet some individuals in power say, no, 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 no. You will not control us. We must earn what we are entitled. We must have it all. We must have the best. We must enjoy the motorcades. We must enjoy this. We must enjoy the other and enjoy the other and enjoy the other and enjoy the other. No one is willing. In fact, today we are saying that uh, like um, um, our total collection of taxes or my stand corrected. I keep referring to you because you, you are in those sectors. Um, I was saying that we are almost collecting 1.3 there about trillion eh? in taxes. 1.3, eh? yeah, 1.3, and almost all of it is going to recurrent. Almost all, actually, almost all of it, the 1.3 trillion is going to recurrent expenditure, meaning that paying salaries, you know, maintenance, and all those things are. It is going to that so that. The, the, the whatever point something trillion because we are have a budget of three plus trillion is money that we do not have and we are planning for it so that uh, we have already exhausted by the time we collect we pay our salaries and whatever whatever we pay so that we have no money for development we have no we have to borrow we have to overtax we have to do what we have to do this and the other and yet no one is willing in the position of leadership to say that we are going to forfeit this to ensure that uh, the common monarchy or the economy stabilizes when once it stabilizes then we will enjoy you are not hearing anybody saying that everybody wants the benefits i heard the other day the speaker saying the speaker was saying that uh, once um, a member of parliament is elected they are given around uh, i think is it seven or so million for a car grant and then there is a 35 million for house though it's a it's a loan eh? though it's a loan but it's repayable within eh? within the term and they have other benefits like the the, the committee allowances the what the mileage the what and so many other things eh? and yet yet no one amongst them have ever said that from today we are going to forfeit our grants her grants, we are going to forfeit our mileage allowance, we are going to forfeit uh, this allowance, sitting allowance in committees, we are going to forfeit all this and this and that, so that the economy stabilizes and once it's okay, then we can draw. But today, we are all cheering them to go and milk further the coffers <laughs> and make sure, by the way, someone was had drawn some cartoon that is a cow, like a, the, the, now Kenya is a cow. <laughs> and every politician is under that cow with a bucket. <laughs> and some of them, they can't wait because, you know, a cow has how many? They are called what? 
they have four eh? so since some of them cannot wait <laughs> the others to milk they have made holes <laughs> to milk that cow and yet the cow in the manger or wherever is supposed to feed there there is nothing in the trough there is nothing the cow is wondering there is nothing here you are milking me to death and yet there is nothing here to make sure i'm productive and let me tell you something uh, you may not like me you may hate me but let me say, say this and i felt compelled to say this because it's important that unless unless the citizens of kenya say enough is enough then come august the 10th 12th or whatever the elections results are going to be announced we are going to continue in the same old complain and cry well we had the opportunity to say something and the opportunity to do something and we did absolutely nothing absolutely nothing because this country by the way um there is no space we have made sure there is no space for good polite people eh? in politics good polite people uh, just the other day i saw uh, uh, a son i don't know whether whether you saw that lounge the uh, son of former politician in embu uh joe Nyaga, the son is it joe or who died joseph eh? who died who o of of which Nyaga? They are Joe, eh? Ah. Ah. Okay. I'm asking between the you know they are there were two Joes, eh? The one that was majority whip or something, and the other one. I saw he's still running somewhere. And the other one who died. Who died? The one that was running for president was who? You don't know those these things. <laughs> yeah? No man, eh? No man is the one that is alive, eh? Joe is the one that passed on. So the son of Joe, eh? <laughs> I saw him launch his presidential <laughs> campaign, eh? And uh, he said, I am running. <laughs> I mean, and some of you even don't know when you are here. <laughs> He's right. He's running and he was saying the way he he had very brilliant ideas. By the way, I chose to listen to him. Sometimes uh, I, I just... Uh, I wanted to ignore him because I thought, uh, are you serious running for what? President, you, this time, you are sure you are going to get two votes? <laughs> and uh, I chose to listen to him. I had, the, the guy is smart. He is smart, he's brilliant, he's bringing out ideas of how he can transform and change this country. But do you think his chances, his chances any chance? His chances are 0 0.0000000. <laughs> By the way, he stands no chance whatsoever. By the, even the people that were there, he had invited in that lounge, eh, were just like, uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> brother, <laughs> talk to us, feed us, we will encourage you. you know, they, they, and I'm sure some of them were encouraging him when they are eating, he's feasting on his meals. And, Go, take, go for it, brother. You are the best there is. <laughs> we are going to vote you in. But I'm sure even most of the people that were seated there cannot vote for him. Cannot. Because there is no place for good people. There are professor. You remember Professor Ulikiapi? A very good guy. A harmless guy. A guy with no corruption. A guy with no this, no the other. He was a performer in the ministry of whatever he was in the education or whatever. Uh, but uh, <laughs> you look at him. What, what did he get? <laughs> eh? Dr. Ekuro Okot, a very good guy, a learned lawyer, a constitutional lawyer, a very good one. Eh? Paul, eh? very learned. But how many votes did he get? <laughs> I'm not so sure whether he got to 20,000. Even 10,000, I'm not so sure. Because there is no place for good, honest people in this country. And who has made sure? As you and I, John. Yes. You and I have made sure that there is no place for good people. But we must be provoked to ensure that there is a place for good people there is 
space for everyone. But if we make it uh, an issue of this and this and this and the other and the only ones that are here and there. Did you hear in Brazil when I was growing up they erected a, a shoe what? He was a shoemaker or shoe repairer. Hallelujah. Hey, hey. Are we together? <laughs> Do you follow news? <laughs> Who did they elect? He, he was a copra. Oh, a shoemaker. Eh? A copra is a big English word. <laughs> a shoemaker. Someone that was repairing shoes or making shoes in the streets is elected to be? Do they stand a chance in Kenya? <laughs> to be president in Kenya. <laughs> no chance whatsoever. In fact, now, to show how, how they don't stand a chance, us here, <laughs> we wouldn't elect. <laughs> yes. If a good guy like Paul stands, who has no case of corruption, I don't know whether he has any. <laughs> he has. <laughs> Which one? <laughs> he ate your bread. Eh? <laughs> that is the corruption he's involved with. You know, <laughs> if he stood, let me tell you, and he said, ah, I want to be your president. I have a vision. <laughs> I have you know, a dream to change this country. People will be looking at him. <laughs> and even sometimes it is about what is in your pocket. What is in your pocket? In fact, they, they, they wait anxiously. What is in your pocket, my friend? Tell us. What are you carrying for us? What are you carrying for us? And in fact, people are eagerly, like now, people are eating everywhere. People are gathered in groups and whatever to sit down and they say, they say, now, even Wanainchi have a sitting Allah and a standing Allah allowance. And I know Leon, you must have gotten something. I saw you standing behind someone. <laughs> yeah, you must have received some standing allowance. Eh? <laughs> but, but the question is when shall we change? When we are this society. Now you will remember me for many years to come. But let me tell you this. I have never preached about this before. But let me tell you this. Nehemiah realized that the problem was within. Because these people do not fear God. They will do anything at the expense of everyone. So that the poor continue to be poor and oppressed and suppressed and make sure they are only getting what you are giving them and you are allowing them to get. And the richer in capitalism are getting richer and richer and richer every day. And we are encouraging even those that are doing, you know, those manner of things, those that are mismanaging our governance, those that are, you know, uh, uh, causing tribal hatred and tribal divisions and tribal wars and all that, all of them, we reward them with positions. We reward them with positions. In fact, some of the people that are going to get very elected, you know, some of the people that are going to get elected, it is because they are famous for something. And that something is not the right thing. It is the wrong thing. And while the church is part of the people that celebrate them and tell them, go on, move on, move on, you are ours, and all that. And when the fear of God is absent, God is watching us, even as we do our things, and later on he will ask us, because we'll be held to account, what are you doing? What is this that you are doing? Even when they, you have the opportunity to do the right things, you still do the wrong things. When there is an open chance for you to make change, you still recycle. When there is this and that, then you still do the same mistakes. And I was amazed that there, there are people who have been out of politics. Like, uh, you, you, you remember there was um, 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 uh, some people like... Uh, Gigi, eh? you remember Gigi? Gigi Karaoke. Who can stay away from politics, then come back and still get ele elected and he's still there. And uh, I'm not saying he is bad, but uh, I'm just asking that uh, after all that time, 
people from his place had no one else that they had seen who could bring the necessary change except him. It shows how we are inclined towards particular directions even today. Even as I'm speaking and I'm not telling you, and even as a church I tell you that vote whoever you want, whoever you feel convicted, vote the one that you love, vote the one that you choose, but later on, let's face the consequences together. <laughs> Tell, remind your neighbor, we will face the consequences together. <laughs> after do you, I tell them, after you do what you want to do. <laughs> you know, someone, someone said the other day, as we stand and pray, that uh, even as you speak to people, he said that at this juncture of our, of our politics, any politicians that is deceiving themselves, they can change the minds of people, then they are deceiving themselves because some people already made up their minds. We make up our minds so early before the elections so that even these others coming to say one, two, three, they change nothing. I know even here we have already made our decision that our vote is going to so and so, to so and so. No matter what I say, it doesn't matter. Now tell your neighbor, continue with the desires of your heart. <laughs> but remind them, after the elections, <laughs> we will cry together. <laughs> Amen. Shall we rise up even as we pray in the name of Jesus? I, I, I know that, that is not one of the most popular sermons that uh, you want to hear, but it is necessary even as we go to this season in the name of Jesus. I want us to sing a short song as we pray in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank uh you. -huh. 
Open up your mouth and pray. 